what a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for having me here. Yeah, at the, we started with that um, song, Amazing Grace. It just brings so much love into me. Uh, it just fills my heart so much. And just to be here and uh, to be in your presence. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, for those who don't know me, I am um, a medium, a spiritual counselor, holistic uh, and uh, Ayurvedic practitioners. I've, I do Reiki, I'm a Reiki teacher, uh, do vibrational medicine or uh, vibrational therapy. Um, I am blessed to be, you know, every day is a blessing in my life to hold love and light for people coming with baggages and trauma and uh, being a conduit between them and their higher selves so that, you know, we can help them reset to their divine blueprint and so that they can live a life of peace, harmony, and not be designed into what they were designed into um, with um, density and duality, whatever they went through but to live in peace and to live in the present now. And um, I would tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I was born in India, in Calcutta. I grew up um, in a very um, loving and kind family, but they were not spiritual, but we understood what God is and we would do go to temple, do prayers and, you know, I was taught what is wrong and right. And I was a kid who was very kind, loving, um, tried to help everyone and always got in trouble for helping others. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, um, I did my bachelor's in commerce and I did my fashion degree. I met this, uh, my ex-husband there and uh, we dated for a long time and got married. He... Came, we came to U.S. Uh, because of his work and land up uh, living here, making America home. And uh, I decided to pursue my fashion design degree and went to FIT, where I um, I graduated. And soon I had two beautiful daughters that I'm very really proud of uh, and took a back seat as a mother. Um, but the... The universe had a whole different, uh, you know, thing for me and um, me and my ex. We started growing apart. There's a lot of um, unrest, and I was not happy. And I never wanted my daughters to go through this. It was not really pleasant for them to see. And um, uh, you know, took a divorce. It was. It's when my spiritual awakening started. Um, it was very, it was not easy to be in that place, being alone in this country, trying to raise the kids, um, being a single mom. But there was, a, I, I felt a deep connection to the, the inner, inner self. Um, there was this divine guidance. Um, I would sit in church or temple and I would be just, given what I need to do and how I want to do and had a deep calling to help women, especially women going through trauma and abuse or whatever. Um, and then I met some spiritual teachers and I was initiated into the mystery school. There was no looking back. Um, you know, the spirit just connected me with all the, you know, ancient modalities and I was initiated more and more and before I knew I could channel for people I could hold I, I just had such a loving heart to help humanity and um and just just kept moving from there and now I have a beautiful holistic center and uh, it's just amazing what we do there um so yeah I mean nothing if i can do anyone can do so it's all it's all about my you know if we are ready to serve humanity if you know, there's a contract with god 
and you'll be uh, here I am doing the work every day so um that was a little bit about myself and uh, let me dive deep into a little bit of what the work I do what is um divine a uh, soul divine uh, activation I have people coming from all kinds of um you know different trauma um they go through uh, many different you know relationship issues or chronic conditions um all kinds of different things and I, if you you know we have to realize one thing that um as a soul we are part of the creator and and we as that part of the creator we are on our own journey to find a perspective of ourselves to do self mastery so we take birth and rebirth to learn to grow and that perspective that we set out for and and our goal is to merge back into the creator taking that perspective so each of us have we are perspective of the creator. We are made in reflection of God. And um, and through our birth and rebirth, we do self, you know, spiritual uh, development and mastery. And we choose our body. We choose, uh, you know, the timeline we need to come. Uh, we choose the frequency. We choose soul families and soul contracts. And um, I, when I work with people, I realize that um, a trust is created. That means their higher self, their guides, their guardians, um, or people passed on in their lives will give me information or there is a beautiful connection that happens. And uh, that creates a trust of you know, something happened in, in, in their past lives or this life or, you know, uh, an event will be shown, a change of uh, their energy uh, or a pivotal moment in their life will be shown. So they are amazed how, how everything is shown to me or, you know, how everything works out. And, and they only show when they are ready for the healing it's it's like you know when they are ready to graduate in the, this life or in that particular timeline they will show up and i've seen um how you know they're ready to take accountability this work of soul activation or graduation can only happen when they are able to take the accountability of their actions, of their thoughts, and the whole the whole process, taking the responsibility to heal themselves, you know, um, and it is done through forgiveness, through compassion. Um, it um, that really it plays a very important role when they are able to do closures of the different events in their lives, or a part of their journey or experience that they have come as a soul to learn and uh, to accomplish. And so this is, you know, in the mystery schools and in, uh, in the Vedic traditions, uh, we've seen that it is done through activation of the heart center. The heart center is the bridge between the physical and the non-physical aspect of us. And uh, <clears throat> in the in the Vedas, we understand that there are 12 petals, uh, lotus petals uh, in, you know, that we function from in, uh, in a heart um, chakra. So the first six of the heart petal lotus, they, uh, the petals are... Uh, they 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 are uh, structured before uh, in the soul's life, and the next six ones are the ones that we structure. So basically, um, what is more important is the connection or the structuring or us of our subtle body. So the heart 
connects us, the physical with the non-physical, which is your subtle bodies, your emotional body, your mental body, your spiritual body. So that's where the connection comes in. And we are able to um, do the closures and create whole new pathways. And the, the, the next six um, petals of the heart uh, is structured through the, the spiritual bodies. And that is uh, through the Tibetan um, traditions of you know, observation the will and the action so you know i you know, when the clients understand these aspects and we start working on how do we um quiet their mind how do we clear their mind from all that they have gone through you know how we can break the illusion the matrix they've been in and be in the present how you know we are able to um, you know sh shift their vibration, uh, the cellular memory, and this is all done through the practice of forgiveness, kindness, compassion. That is such a big part of our healing process, and uh, I have seen you know uh, the. Um, it's when people start doing the closures of, uh, you know, the past events or people in their lives. And forgiveness is when they are able to come into the divine blueprint of their soul. And there's a knowing that they processed forgiveness or acceptance or, you know, whatever they are going through. So this is a, you know, this is when they come into the blueprint of the soul and and uh, before they know they feel like a whole new person they're able to learn uh, it's like coming to a spiritual school and learning all different things it's resetting uh, you know and bringing a new vibration of love love and forgiveness are the most two amazing tools on this in this universe so that's what we do. And um, I am really blessed to hold love and light for people. And uh, we were talking about uh, also the soul contracts. So what are soul contracts, um, karmic entanglements? So before, uh, a soul comes on this planet, on on this in this physical. Uh, when it reincarnates, you're in the physical plane. Um, they have already uh, created. Uh, how would I say? They've already worked with other souls to help them uh, awaken in this lifetime. To um, you know, help them do closures of things or learn a perspective of life. And uh, these are, it can be, you know, that can be primary or they can be secondary um, soul contracts. Usually the primary con con contracts are with the parents, with the kids, siblings, long-term relationship with the, with the spouse. Uh, and short term, uh, like uh, the secondary one could be like a co-partner, um, someone you work with or someone you play sports with. Some, and it could be negative or it could be positive. So it depends. So um, let me give you an example of um, a primary con uh, uh, soul contract. I had a client who came once and um, he was suffering. He was basically abandoned by both his parents and he was adopted. Um, and he suffered a lot uh, with uh, abandonment. And he was very, very hard, very negative. 
um, he didn't know how to process his life because every time he came, he was in any relationship, he would uh, break up and there was no peace in his life. And so he came and we did some um, past life regression and we found out that in other lifetime, um, he was very abusive to his kids and family and worked with ego, hatred, whatever. He would abandon people in his life. So there was something that he didn't do closures of in the other lifetime that he had to come back. And these parents were who who helped him see within himself what he needed to do, what he had to learn is compassion forgiveness to accept people for who they are not not work with ego and um so yeah that that is um one story um and he became he he actually became a teacher and he went in quest to find how do we <clears throat> learn to align ourselves how do we remove ourselves from these pains and suffering um, in another instance, uh, this woman who was in a long-term abusive relationship, um, he would be really bad and mean and hurtful all the time, but it was like a codependency or they were, you know, um, and the kids were watching what that was happening. And so for many years, she was in the relationship and didn't, she didn't have the guts to even get out, uh, and then there was a man who came in her life and showed that, you know, self-worth, the worthiness to have, um, you know, a right uh, relationship with people and uh, your boundaries are so important. Self-love is so important. So, you know, these are the examples of primary contracts and then there are short contracts you know the um secondary ones where people um so if, for instance there are co-workers who keep leeching they keep you know taking more and more of your energy your time and you know every time this person would get similar kind of people in their lives so probably you know, there was a karmic connection where he did something in past life when we went to, through his energy and found out. Um, and he had to learn to be compassionate, to be kind to other people, to be respectful to other people. So something like that is the, you know, secondary uh, contracts. Um, but again, uh, these people awaken health with spiritual developments they come and vice versa you recruit the other souls in your life for their awakening so it's it's just it's like we are walking each other home that's the true spirit of being human and having uh, this spiritual experience here so that's what it is